What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today we're taking a look at my good buddy Joe the Mountain Jedi's unholy creation, the Apocalypse Iron Head. If you've seen Ran When Parked on my channel, and you don't know that Joe the Mountain Jedi is continuing with Ran When Parked on his own channel, now you know, and that's where he finished up the Iron Head bug out bike build. I'll have a link to his channel down below in the description if you want to check that out, but for right now, let's check out this bike, because this thing is freaking awesome, and this this is my first time getting my grubby little dick beaters all over it. When it came to the concept of this bike, it was all about keeping it simple for the apocalypse, something that could survive an EMP and hordes of ravening mutants. That is why it's an iron head. Like Joe the Mountain Jedi says, if this engine was any simpler, it wouldn't run. Iron heads are always catching a bad rap, man. They they just really get the short end of the stick. Nobody wants them. They're ugly ducklings. And up until pretty recently, pretty much anybody who had an iron head really just wishes that it was a shovel. I'm here to tell you that that is pretty undeserved. They made this engine almost completely unchanged. Besides switching around where the brake and the shift lever was for a really long time. Parts are everywhere. They're dirt cheap. They'll pretty much run forever under very suspect very large tolerances. Again, making it the perfect apocalypse bike. The Iron Head just embodies the kind of bike that you can kind of fix it with a hammer. I mean, it kind of is a hammer. This is a simple tool, but it'll get the job done and it will do so under duress. Is it the prettiest bike in the world? No. Is it the ugliest bike in the world? Close. Beauty is in the eye of the beer holder, of course, and let me tell you about this dirtster. The iron head was left this way on purpose. Joe has made a bike that is mechanically sound. This thing runs like a top and it starts on the first press of the button with barely any choke. But the whole bike looks, yeah, it looks a little bit like a boat anchor that's been left on the bottom of the ocean for a decade or so. That, again, was on purpose. This thing was built simple, of course. It was built simple because it needs to survive the EMP and the nuclear fallout of an irradiated future, but in this future where it's every man for himself, where it's dog eat dog and you got people running and gunning and trying to take what you got, you know, it makes sense to have something that looks like it isn't worth taking, but performs perfectly. Now, performing perfectly and Harley Davidson Ironhead are usually not words that get used in the same sentence, but most Ironheads haven't had Joe the Mountain Jedi go through them. This motorcycle is ready to go anywhere. Of course, it is already heading somewhere because somebody already won this motorcycle. It was part of the giveaway on the Joe the Mountain Jedi channel, and it's got a new owner who <laughs> happens to be in Washington State. We're not sure how we're going to get it there yet, but I might go ahead and give him a call, and once the mountain passes thaw out, I might go ahead and put it to the test just how durable and reliable this motorcycle is. I am legitimately have not called him or talked to him yet, so I, I am going to run that by him, but he might hear about it in the video first before I get a hold. Of Speaking of all that, <laughs> yeah, I should stop yapping about how it performs and go make it perform. No choke, baby. Tell you one thing about an iron head, man. That sounds like a Harley Davidson, doesn't it? Speedometer? Hey, who needs them, baby? It just is so much fun. You get on a bike like this, and there's just something about a dirtster, something. I've just talked about it forever until I finally built my own. There's something about a sportster and putting knobbies on it and having it sit way up high that just makes you just want to let loose the second you get on it. And I don't care if it's an Evo Sportster or, or if it is an Iron Head. I don't know about the newest ones, but I'd give it the college try if someone wanted to give me a Nightster, that's for sure. Hordes of wastelanders chasing you across an irradiated forest. This does feel exactly like the kind of bike you'd be getting away from them on. How does it actually perform off-road? Well, just like any Sportster, it's going to be uh, as varied as your skill is, that's for sure. But is it capable? Capable of taking the abuse, baby, listen up. An iron head, they can take the abuse. The tolerances that an iron head will continue to proceed under are uh, pretty generous. Can it go off-road? you damn straight it can go off-road. I don't know if sportsters were ever meant to do that, but back in the day, sportsters were meant to do just about everything. Yeah, the sportster started out its life as a sport bike. It was in the name. And ever since it started out its life as a sport bike back in the day, with its main competition being the Triumph 650, it has been so many different things, including a bike that was meant to go off-road. 
Because back in the day, there weren't such thing as dirt bikes. There was just bikes. And if you wanted to go off-road, well, you did it on a Sportster. You know, of course, or a Triumph or any, <laughs> or any of the other bikes that they made back in the day. But still, if you wanted to do it on a Harley, you did it on a Sportster. Now, the fact that Joe unearthed this thing, this 1983 Sportster, four decades old after sitting for years and years, and yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and all of a sudden it's running again, is just a testament to the fact that these things go forever. Once again, making it the perfect wasteland bike. From the mind of Joe the Mountain Jedi. <laughs> Oh man, my man who won this bike is getting a cool one, that's for sure. And I didn't ask your permission to ride it, but I'm going to go ahead and say thank you in advance. You'd think that nothing new could be as simple as an iron head, that they just don't make bikes like that anymore, but they do still make bikes like that. Of course, it isn't a Harley, it isn't a V-Twin, and it's not a thousand cc's, it's a whopping 150, but the XR150 is as uh, spiritually close, we'll say, as you can get to an iron head in the year 2024. If you guys remember, I rode one of these XR150s all the way across the country without stopping for gas once. I'll have that video linked down below too. Please go watch it. And you know, I never really worry too much about how many views a video gets. Some do great, some do bad. It's all over the place. You can never really count on anything. But I had a lot of fun making that video and always kind of wish a few more people had saw it. So that's down below if you want to see a cross country adventure without stopping for gas on an XR150. But those of you who did see that video will go, hey, wasn't the one you did that on white? Yes, it was. This is Black Thunder to my bike's white lightning and this is David's XR150. I've got this one because uh, in taking the thumbnail for that cross country trip, I actually smoked the clutch on that thing. That's right, it made it all the way across the country without one single thing breaking except for the speedometer. And then at the end of the journey, I decided to have Shaylee go with me in the woods and help me take a nice thumbnail with the bike and getting it in and out of that riverbed, I smoked the clutch and I actually have it on video. Disaster in Appalachia. Oops, I did it again. for me to not share or even overshare my shame. And I'm sure some people will be asking, well, who won the XR150? Because weren't you giving that away, Shade Tree Surgeon? Yes, we are. And we haven't picked a winner for it yet. So there's gonna be a live stream after this, so keep those cell phones on if you bought a ticket for the four motorcycle giveaway that we did uh, previous to the camp out. We still have a bike to give away, and it's the XR150. <sighs> <laughs> Not exactly the same roar as, uh, as the old iron head, is it? It's really saying something when you get on a motorcycle that isn't as fast and has worse brakes but is 40 years newer than an iron head. Of course, the little Honda is only working with 150 cc's and about 12 horsepower, so it's not that weird that the brakes aren't as good and it doesn't accelerate like an iron head. I'm still saying this is as spiritually close as you can get to an iron head in modern day times. Even right down to the do anything aspect of the XR150, just like the Ironhead. Back in the day when the Sportster first came out, it had to be a bike that did everything. If you wanted a dirt bike, if you wanted a touring bike, if you wanted a commuter bike, well, you got a Sportster and you just outfitted it to do whatever you want. And in 2024, I think the XR150 fills that quite nicely as well. Now, traveling, I'm sure that a lot of people would scoff at the idea. Travel on a 150cc bike, especially travel the country? Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that, yes, you can because I've done it. Now, you don't have to do it like I did and not stop at a single gas station and take everything you need with you. It is possible 
possible. A Honda XR150 carried yours truly. 300 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. This body that women love and men fear. It carried all of this American grade A beef plus about 15 gallons of gasoline, plus all my camping equipment, plus all my clothes, plus my rain gear, like a lot. That bike was loaded down. Like I said, 15 gallons of gasoline ain't light. I carried all of that across the country from Tampa to Niagara Falls without a single hiccup. So can you travel on a 150cc bike? You're goddamn straight you can travel on a 150. I did it, if my dumb ass can pull that off, so can you. For 2,900 bucks, again, back Back in the day, sports were cheap as hell. I, re I really think, like, like, this is, again, as close to an iron head in modern day times as you can get. But for 2,900 bucks, this is a motorcycle that will take you pretty much anywhere you want to go. 2,900 bucks is pretty right on. I mean, this is a 2024, but 2,900 bucks, that'll probably get you a nice iron head too. Well, I don't know about nice, but it'll, it'll get you an iron head. <laughs> just being on this bike, because I haven't ridden mine because I got to put a clutch in it, but just being on this bike again is just bringing back the mammaries. And speaking of mammaries, we better hurry up and get back to the compound because Thick Lizzie is down visiting and staying with us and her and old Chloe Cox are getting up to no good. And I feel like I should scurry on back and check in on the girls and their girls and just see if they, they need a hand or maybe even a couple hands. I'm putting all 12 of these ponies to work. I've heard there's some unattended wayward ladies in need of my assistance. All right, well, making all the gear guys happy, uh, we have a suspicious lack of cleavage over here, <laughs> but we're doing, <laughs> we're doing the right thing. Don't worry, we're making up for it. <laughs> it's the only girl I know who can get a video demonetized with one bounce. YouTube just doesn't understand. There's a lot of real estate over here. All right, hop on. Let's see if you remember how to work a clutch. Chloe was worried about not remembering. And then she immediately did it fine. He had nothing to worry about at all. I perfectionistic. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only thing you have to worry about. The worst variable here is me. Great job. Hell yeah. I'm so proud of you. You're killing it. Boom, perfect. I'll try taking off again. A natural, baby, a natural. Dude, look, you haven't stalled once. You just put them size nines to work, baby. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I have many weaknesses. I believe in you. And if you don't feel like shifting, you don't have to. Just ride around and practice starting and stopping as many times as you want. And hey, look, it's groundskeeper Willie. <laughs> There she goes. Oh, with authority. I love it. We got Uber Eats. Tomahawk pork chops. <laughs> what? Potatoes. Oh, yeah. Asparagus. Dang, dude. All right. I take sure, back sure. every mean thing I've said about that's you. Right, that's right. You can just start again. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start from scratch. Kill those stabbins. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete. All right, Peg Bundy. Peg Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you look like right now. What's a Peg Bundy? A Peg Bundy. Is that who Peg Bundy? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was into that. No, I feel like I'm a Florida mobster. You remember the cocaine cowboys? Oh, yeah, dude. That's what I feel like I look like. It's like one of those old white. I didn't know anything. <laughs> well, just because the clutch is burned up on white lightning over here, that doesn't mean we're going to leave it that way. Let's make this bike run again so me and Chloe can ride dueling XRs together. Or at least hopefully. I guess if I don't get it fixed, then we won't ride XRs together tomorrow morning. I'll just go ahead and ride Barnacle Boy the Dirtster. But either way, we're going to try though. We're going to try because whoever's winning one of these, and like I said, we're doing a live stream after this. Whoever's winning one of these, I'm just going to let them choose between the white one and the black one. It's up to you. This one will been through a little more than the black one, that's for sure. But it's got the memories, baby. What memories live on in this motorcycle from a cross-country journey? California quiet. I've never actually changed a clutch on one of these before, but how hard could it be? And we got the oil out. Let's go ahead and get this sucker off of here.
Come on. Did I miss one? I missed one. All right, there we go. <laughs> That's a lot easier for some reason. <laughs> and we're gonna clear the brake pedal. Okay, no cut. You don't have to remove the rear brake pedal. So the clutch I ordered just came like completely assembled like this. It didn't come with discs. It just came with the, the whole damn thing. I guess that's how they come. Oh, does this bearing? Okay, it just pulls out. All right. That was question number one. It's like, it's so I might have to make a tool for this. And so that's not like a normal nut. You see how it's got like those four yes. cutouts? Yeah. So it takes a special Honda tool to take that on and off. Yes. Like at um, the dealership But I could order one online. This is like some kind of oil. Like, but I have to do it now. Pumper <laughs> thing. Yeah, so I just, <laughs> I'm gonna have to take something and make something, but I don't know if I like, cause I'm gonna have to cut it down so it fits in there. So yeah. that might make it too weak to get this off. It might just snap the tool. You know what I mean? It's the next day and this is still not fixed. I went ahead and asked Joe the Mountain Jedi if he had a poor boy fix for this. He did not disappoint. He definitely did. Although he said this is really kind of an extreme measure thing. He told me I could take a pair of needle nose pliers, a C clamp and a hammer and I could probably get that thing off. But since this is a giveaway bike or possibly a giveaway bike, you could also pick the black one instead. With that possibility in mind, I just went ahead and ordered the actual tool. Luckily it was on Amazon from Buddy Bezos. $10 next day delivery so I'm not gonna have to wait very long but it's also not gonna be fixed in this episode which is kind of sus because we're picking a winner for it tonight after this video on a live stream yeah I guess I'll probably just pick the black one or if you really really trust me you can still get white lightning instead it's the next day I know I heard Chloe out here somewhere practicing on the bike which is always a nice sound to hear when you walk outside and without me even saying anything or doing anything Chloe Cox has already jumped on that bike and running around around the yard, but this place is on seven and a half acres, so I'm gonna have to go jump on the dirtster and go find her. Who said iron heads don't fire right up? Well, I guess not all of them do, but ones that Joe the Mountain Jedi has worked on fire right up. There she is. Well, morning. How you feeling? She's accelerating a little slow back there and accelerating slow on an XR150. That's extra slow. We're not gonna push Chloe Cox past her comfort zone. Not today, that's for sure. I wanted to walk away from this. Uh, exactly, I wanted to walk away from this, but yeah, we, wanted to, we wanted to leave this motorcycle ride today feeling good, feeling confident, and being happy about it. Not feeling like she was stressed out and pushed to a place that she didn't like. That's always important when you're riding motorcycles with somebody you care about. And I guess maybe even someone even you don't care about because just encouraging people to ride motorcycles is a good thing no matter what and you shouldn't push people out of their comfort zone that's why whenever i lead a group ride if you ever see me advertise a group ride in an area near you and we do them all over the country whenever i lead a group ride i always ride what i think is just below the least skilled person on the ride now obviously i can't know that for sure so basically i just ride i follow all the rules and i take things really nice and easy and it's not a hooligan ride so sorry to all you guys who want to be hooligans but when you're trying to get someone into motorcycles and riding with other people, slow and steady wins the race on that one. Sorry to disappoint you from the shade tree outlaw persona of just being a total dickhead at all times. When it comes to introducing people to motorcycles, I like to do it the right way. Well, that's enough about bikes that are already given away. Let's talk about bikes that are still up for grabs. And I got a V-Rod in my clutches already from Buck Brown that we're about to go take a spin on. But my man Shep over here, groundskeeper Willie, <laughs> aka our very favorite ginger hobbit, is going on a mission to visit our friend Toxicarius in the great white north. In addition to the V-Rod, there's also going to be a 2016 Dyna Street Bob. My man Toxicarius coming through with an amazing donation that is also going to be up for grabs. As long as Shep gets home safe anyway. <laughs> he, only, he usually only wrecks motorcycles, not cars. Don't right. worry about it. Right. And that brings us to a motorcycle that you definitely can win, but not just this motorcycle, the V-Rod, the Night Rod, the Dark 
night. As donated by the one and only Bucket Hat Brown, you can win this motorcycle right now, but you can also win a 2016 Dyna if you're more of a traditionalist when it comes to Harley Davidson's. That's been donated by our man Toxicarius. Shep is on his way to go get it right now. We should have it in a couple days. You guys will be able to check that out. You're going to get to choose between this night rod right here or the 2016 Street Bob. I know for all you V-Rod stands out there, only a V-Rod will do, but for the purists, I'm sure that they'll pick the Harley Davidson Street Bob over this. They're both amazing bikes. I'd probably go with the V-Rod myself. I just think they're so freaking cool, but hey baby, that's just me. Here's the thing though, donations, prizes, all that stuff aside, we are on a mission here. I know a lot of you guys know it and a lot of you guys have heard me make this spiel, but I'm gonna do it again. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is make the world a better place. This last week with Dave and Cindy being in a life-threatening motorcycle accident with Dave suffering road rash, Cindy having to get surgery for a broken shoulder, broken wrist, broken elbow, and having severe road rash has just thrown us all for a freaking loop, man. The mission, however, remains the same. And Cindy's only ask, the only thing she asked for at all was to tell people about the raffle because we're still making Kira Adderley's House for Women happen. If you guys know Forgotten Angels, you know they mainly help out young men who have aged out of the foster care system, young men who've never had a chance in life, who's been beaten down, just abused, just been through the ringer, stuff you can't even possibly imagine. Then on their 18th birthday, they age out of foster care, and if they're in a bad acting foster care home, they're made homeless. This may sound crazy, it may sound insane to you, I promise it happens almost every single day. These are kids who have been abandoned by their family or abused by their family, and then when the state is supposed to help them out and put them in a place where they can be raised and be taught how to be productive members of society, they fall through the cracks there too, because the only qualifications a state foster home has to give is that they have air conditioning, at least in the state of Florida and a place to sleep. They are not even required to feed them most of the time if the kid's old enough to go out and get a job at McDonald's at 14 or 15 years old. It's insane. So that's what happens. They get paid over a thousand dollars per kid. They treat them like cash cows. They milk them till they're dry and then when the money shuts off when they turn 18 they put all their belongings in a trash bag and they make them homeless. Well it's not just young men it's also young women that this happens to and even scarier young women young 17 and 18 year old women who already are mothers themselves. This is what I talk about when I talk about breaking the cycle. Here at Adelie's house is going to be able to house 18 to 22 young women with a full-time live-in mentor who's going to teach these young women how to be mothers, how to cook a meal, how to be responsible, how to, how to you know, open a bank account, how to take care of their kid and change a diaper and all these things that they probably never learned or if they have learned, they've learned them halfway. It's just insane what these young women who are trying to raise a kid are going through, what they have to put up with. And of course, you know Cindy's story with Kira Adderley was a young woman that she was mentoring who had been through the foster care system, who had been made homeless, who had fought her way back with David and Cindy's help only to be murdered in cold blood over a small amount of money by someone in her family. It's why Cindy is so passionate about making Kira Adderley's house for women because at the time they didn't have a place to put a young woman. At Forgotten Angels, there's young men staying there. For obvious reasons, there cannot be any kind of cohabitation between young men and young women who are in these kind of incredibly risky situations, but it just broke Cindy's heart, obviously, is such a tragic loss of a person who had fought through so much to get back into being a good person and a productive member of society just to be cut down because she was in a dangerous situation that she had no way to escape from without making herself homeless. That's why it's gonna be called the Adderley House for Women, and that's what it's trying to prevent. I know I'm all over the place here. I'm a little bit of a heathen. I can be a lecher at times. I know what I look like. I know what I sound like. Uh, I know what my channel looks like to a lot of people. I know I don't look like a very good person, and I know that a lot of people don't like me, but that's all right, because I know a lot of you guys out there are like that too, but you know who you are, you know what you stand for, and at the end of the day, no matter what some other dickhead looking at you thinks about you, you guys who come to the camp out, who help out Forgotten Angels, who buy these raffle tickets, who help us make the world a better place, you guys know what you're about, and I could give one single fuck what the rest of the world thinks about you, because I know that you're a bad person doing good things. And together, we're doing something that we can be proud of. We're doing something that after we're all dead and gone, 
it'll still mean something. Sorry to get all serious on you guys. There's a week left on this raffle. We're still just hanging in balance here, trying to make the Kira Adderley house happen. And it's all of you guys who are helping us make that a reality. I know it's going to happen because, sorry to get all serious on you guys. There's a week left on this raffle. We're still just hanging in balance here, trying to make the Kira Adderley house happen. And it's all of you guys who are helping us make that a reality. I know it's going to happen because we've never failed yet. That's gonna about do it for this one, y'all. Till next time, keep it weird. Oh yeah, live stream directly after this. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Panic spreading far and wide Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.